When you have too much to tell, don't tell it all in one chart. It will create a color collage and it's going to confuse your readers and it's going to cost them too much energy trying to figure out the message of your chart. What you can do is create what looks like multiple charts and format these horizontally. You can also create chart matrices. Just make sure that you're using a common axis, that you have a common size, font, spacing, etc. in all your charts. Each chart should basically look like the identical twin of the other, except that it's based on a different variable, so it's showing a different series. Sequencing is also an important factor to consider when you're designing panel charts. So if there is a specific sequence in your organization, so for example, there's a special way that you always show your companies or your products or your segments, then you'd probably want to keep this sequence when you design your panel. When that's not the case, then you should consider to sequence your charts in the panel in ascending or descending order based on the value of your variable. To design your panel charts as one chart is actually really easy. All you have to do is get your data organized in this way. In this case, I would like to compare the actual and budget performance for these four companies. It looks like it's four different charts that are positioned right beside each other, but it's actually one chart. If I click on the plot area, you're going to see it's one. I've also added dividers to be able to separate and distinguish each of these companies. If I was going to show all of this in one single chart, it's going to be super crowded because I would have eight series in here, one for company A actual, company A budget, company B actual, company B budget, and so on. And it's going to make it very difficult to follow and distinguish. The setup that I have here makes it very easy to compare not only each company's performance on its own, how it did against budget, but also to compare the companies with one another because they are right beside each other and they're using the same axis. It's important that the setup of my data for my horizontal axis is as simplified as possible to make sure that I'm not overcrowding the axis. I also need to design my data table in this way where I have four series for each company, but two of which are always empty. This ensures that I have a break in my line, that this doesn't continue over to the next company. So if I would copy this to here, you're going to see my line for company A connects with the one for company B. When I take it away, I get the impact that I want. Let's set up the chart together. I'm going to highlight my data, so make sure you also highlight these empty cells and insert a line chart. Because I have four series, I get four different colors. Two different colors for actual and two different ones for budget. So I'm going to first set up my standard colors for budget and actual. I'm going to make my grid lines also lighter and switch my legend to top. And then remove these duplicates. Now we need to add these dividers. And we're going to use the same trick we saw in a previous video where we're going to use error lines as our dividers. As a first step, we will need to put markers here. So we will need to introduce a scatter plot that has a marker exactly where we want our line to be. Once we have the marker set up on the axis, all we need to do is activate our arrow bars for them.
Up here is where I control my dividers. So I'm going to remove this data. And if we start with a basis of 12, because we want our divider to be after the 12 months, so one should be at 12 and a half, the other one should be at 24 and a half, and so on. So we're going to use this formula. That's going to be the position of our marker on the x-axis and our y is going to be 0. Now I'm going to add this into my chart. We're going to call the series dividers. For our values, I will add the y values first. And once we switch to a scatter plot, I will then add the x values. So I can't see it right now. I will select it from my drop down. There it is. And now I will change the chart type to a scatter plot. Okay, those are the three. I will add my x values to it. I get them positioned properly. What I need is a line that goes all the way up to the end of my plot area. And I want that line to always be here. It should be dynamic. I don't want to always fix it depending on my last number here. To do that, I can switch the axis of my divider series to the secondary axis. That way, I can define a maximum and a minimum for my axis and make sure that my dividers go all the way up. So let me switch these first. Make sure I have selected the dividers, format, and select secondary axis. Now I can fix this axis to 0 and 1. It's already right there. As a next step, I will activate the error bars for this series. By default, I get both. I just want the line going from my marker all the way up. So that's actually my plus. I don't want a cap. And I do want a fixed value because I want it to go all the way up to 1. Now you can see these are all 0, 1, but it's just rounding it up. So I want it to go all the way here, and that looks good. The only thing is I don't want them to be this dark. I want them to be a lighter color. Now I need to make some cosmetic enhancements here. This horizontal arrow bars, I don't need. I can remove them. I can also remove my markers, make them invisible. I can remove this legend here. For this axis, I can format it so that I don't see the numbers and I don't see these tick marks. But keep the line because that's going to act like a divider, but just change the color to match the rest. And I will remove this border. All I need is to add a title and I'm done with my panel chart. To expand on this, I'm just going to show you another example that I've included in the demo workbook that provides a matrix view for the panel chart. So in this case, I have two different products, product A and product B, and I would like to compare for each company the performance in terms of product A and product B alone on their own, but also compare them with each other. To create this, you follow the exact same steps I showed you in the example before. The only thing you need to do is that you will create two separate charts, one for product A and another one for product B. You will place them like this, one above the other chart. 
One difference is that you need to show the horizontal axis only for the chart that's below. So you can fully remove it from the second chart. And you just need to activate the legend for the top chart. Then looks like one picture, one single chart showing a lot of information. You can of course change the size of these charts depending on the space that you have on your report. So in this case, these are too long. So I can reduce the width of this, but whatever I change here, I need to make sure that I'm changing it in this one as well. So make sure that you repeat the same height that you take for this one, for this one as well, to be consistent with each other. Showing these mini charts right beside each other is a very effective way of comparing different variables for different categories. Whenever you have a lot of data and your chart becomes overcrowded, remember to use panel charts.